Welcome on the first belt of our big stories, and we kickstart the conversation with health. Now, in recent times, we've been told about dialysis uh, treatment, if you like, which is going to move from a little over 300 cities to close to 800 cities, around 736 Ghana cities, over a 100% increment. But what does that really mean? We've heard from the PRO of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. But today on the show, we want to look at different dynamics of that issue. One, what, what are the diseases that affect the kidney? What are the repercussions? How can we uh, protect our kidneys so that we don't even get there? But for those who have got there, what does this mean in terms of cost? We'll be dilating on all of these together with our guests. Uh, we have Thomas Kahn. He's been on dialysis for some 10 years. He'll be sharing his lived, real-life experiences with us. But for starters, we go to Dr. Elliot Karanting Tano. He's a senior lecturer at the KNUST, a senior specialist and consulting nephrologist at the Confuanoche Teaching Hospital. A very good morning to you, Doc. Thank you for joining the conversation. A good morning to you too. I hope you are good. I am very well. Mm. Well, let's 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 get some education on our kidneys. Uh, most of us, I mean, unless we've had some surgical procedures, would have two of them. What are the functions of the kidney, kidneys to start off? All right. So thank you very much. And good morning also to your viewers and listeners. Yeah. So, yes, uh, the kidney plays a major role, of course, in the body. And I keep saying that it is that organ that uh, we don't tend to discuss a lot more about until Kolebu decides to post, you know, something sure. for their patients. And again, mm -hmm. it gives me some excitement to take advantage to educate people about kidney disease. So indeed, um, do you know, I mean, that before your blood, uh, your body decides to make more blood uh, to increase the level of your blood levels, it has to do with the kidney. The kidney actually uh, sends the signal that, listen, maybe you are bleeding or maybe your blood levels have gone low, so let's increase it. And that is why when people get kidney disease, one of the big challenges is that their blood levels are low. And indeed, it happens to be one of the symptoms they tend to present with uh, more mm -hmm. often than not because they are easily getting tired and they are dizzy and stuff like that. The other thing the kidney does is that, of course, it helps you to control your blood pressure. So if your blood pressure will stay normal, the kidney has a major role to play. So one of the things they will present with is high blood pressure, which normally will present with maybe headaches and some palpitation. They feel their heart beating and they really feel uncomfortable. The common thing that we all know is that the kidney, of course, is that which helps you to make urine. Of course, without your kidneys, you will not be peeing. And I think if you are able to wake up, I keep saying, and pee comfortably, uh, you should thank God because, you know, people like Thomas Khan and other patients I have would have to pay that amount that you are seeing to be able to pee, in quotes, because it's the machine that helps them to pee. So it's your kidney that helps you actually to pee. So thank God if you can pee. And that is why we are having this conversation that people will take very good care of their kidneys or else you have to pay hefty amounts to be able to pee. The next thing your kidney does is that as you eat foods, you drink water and all of these things that sometimes you don't know what the contents are, the kidney is the one that tends to stabilize it. So, right, so if something is too high, the kidney says, okay, this is too high, let's pee it out. If it is too low, it holds on to it. So it happens to be the, the magic regulator of your body. Mm. And for your teeth and bones to become strong, the kidneys have a major role. So you hear calcium and you need the sun for vitamin D. Mind you, if you can sit in the sun for all I care for how many years, but if your kidneys are not working, that vitamin D will not be useful to be able to get the calcium and the, uh, phosphate in terms of the strong bones that you need for your teeth and the, your bones. So, so in other words, these are uh, uh, absorption, major, major functions of the kidney. Yeah. Absorption of these nutrients into the body are uh, key functions of the, the kidney as well. I, I won't say the absorption. The, the, it is a, your, the other system that takes care of the absorption. But after you absorb it into your system, mm. it's the kidney that ensures that they are within the right balance. You know, the, the body is all about balance. Mm. So if it is too high, it's a problem. If it is too low, it's a problem. Something keeps it balanced. As you said now, you can drink two gallons of water. You are most likely going to pee two gallons of water so you stay balanced. But if my patient drinks even one bottle of water and they are not peeing, that bottle of water will stay in their body and it gets into their lungs and they cannot breathe. So the kidney regulates a lot of these things in your body. 
That explains it then, because when I wake up every morning, I have a routine where I take in quite a bit of water, 500 or 750 milliliters. And of course, in the course of the show, I'll be uh, doing those runs because it must come out. So we thank God for our kidneys, but what, what are some of the ailments that, you know, impact the kidney? And what, what, are there any foods, for example, that damage the kidney? Any things we take in that can damage the kidney? Okay, so in terms of things we do that damage the kidneys, I mean, there are quite a few, but before, I mean, just for educational purposes, I would want to start from the common ones, all right? So the world over, the most common cause of uh, kidney disease actually is diabetes, all right? So, and here in Ghana, about 7% of us, you know, have some form of, or have diabetes, I, I should say. Uh, well, what, other, what, what percentage did you just say? 7%, about 7%. To be exact, right. it's about 6.5, 6.4. So okay. uh, on the average, so uh, there's no half human being, so 7%, I would say. So seven out of 100 people typically have diabetes here in Ghana. Now, hypertension is also a major cause of kidney disease. And here in Ghana, about a third of us, so if you take uh, one out of three people above age 18, they have hypertension. And these are the two drivers of uh, kidney disease in our part of the world. So I think I need to mention that quickly. And then we can talk about things that we do. I think you mentioned something that is great in terms of drinking water. And that is what most people don't do when they have healthy kidneys to ensure that the kidney does not uh, strain itself too much. And that causes the kidney to get tired before you know they get to their late ages. So drinking a lot of water, which I would advise that you do, and of course, for our viewers to also do. And then the things we eat, that's what, you're, what you asked about. Now, what we eat is so important, like I said, because if you have so much content that the body struggles to deal with, and for that matter, the kidney struggle to deal with, then that is when it hits you know, on the kidney over a period of time. Now, hypertension, the major problem with hypertension in terms of what we eat is salt. We love salt. In fact, people sometimes before they taste their meals, they will even shake some salt even on the table on top of it because we have, you know, adjusted our taste buds to love so much salt. And as we take so much of this salt, it eventually leads to hypertension, which eventually affects the kidney. Now, the other thing is that our dieting, I think we have said it over and over again, it should probably be more laden with fruits and vegetables and less in terms of the fats and the carbohydrates and all of that. But our food is all carbohydrate laden, of course, and when we make some money, then we are eating more protein, nutritious food that eventually are more harmful, not just to the kidney, but to generally to the body. So if you are to eat, make sure half of your meal is more, in quotes, vegetable laden, I mean, with some good legumes and seeds and all that are helpful, I mean, for your body, instead of, you know, too much of, of fat and too much of protein and all. Some anim uh, anim in fact, uh, uh, plant proteins are the best, actually. And then indeed, fish is also good. But again, animal protein, once in a while, is good. But if it's a routine, you know, then it becomes a problem. Then the other thing is sugary uh, content, you know. So we are taking a lot of sugar-containing uh, diets, you know. So we put in so much sugar. Now we have all this sweetness for our kids and all of that. We should watch it because all of these things with time predispose them to diabetes, which eventually, like I said, is a major cause of kidney disease. And then things we do, alcohol intake. Now young men are taking all sorts of alcohols with all sorts of content. Sometimes we cannot quantify with whatever the objective to be able to what uh, get mom power sleep with a hundred men women and all of that i don't know what but again as you do all of these things know that all the toxins you are taking it is the kidney that has to flush it out of your body so if it keeps flushing for a while and probably you stop it that's helpful but if you keep doing it for a long period of time you tend to run into trouble now smoking cigarettes and all and then smoking now people smoke all sort of things uh, shisha whatever names i mean they have it now these young people and i think all of these things are risky behavior that can affect the kidney having said all of these things that we do the other thing is that sometimes through no fault of yours by virtue of the family you are born into, you probably might have a risk of kidney disease. You know, so there are some diseases that are in families. So it is important that we keep ourselves checked regularly. Uh, don't just say, oh, because I'm able to pass urine, my kidney functions are fine. My advice is that 
even if you are passing urine adequately, once a while, check your kidney function. I keep saying the kidney's function is like the mobile phone that we use. When you charge it in the morning, you pick it at 100. As you keep talking, if you don't look on your phone to know it's now 60% or 20%, you just keep talking, and then with time, you it will give you a low battery signal or charge or whatever. It's just like around 20% or 15%. That is exactly how the kidney works. So if you are waiting for you to see symptoms first, it might be too late. And that is why once a while, we need to just check our kidneys to ensure uh, it is healthy or else the cost that you know will come to us will be unbearable. And it's interesting. So of all the things you've said, I, and I'm using myself as an example, I am not guilty apart from the sugary bits. And I'm trying to control it as much as I can. I try to drink a lot of fluid, uh, exercise when I can. But I know that our diet here is largely, if you look at the bankus and the tuazafis and the face the walls, coconuts and everything else we take here, and, and rice, there's a lot of starch in, in what we consume. And then that also impacts our, well, metabolism, processing of sugars, and also, some say it's, not, it's technically not taking sugar that leads to diabetes, but the failure of the, um, what's that organ again? The, the one the that produces insulin. The pancreas? The pancreas. Uh, yeah. that, that is the cause. So I just want you to do that brief education before I bring in uh, Thomas Kahn, who has had real life experience with kidney issues. Just clarify that for me. Yes. So in fact, when I say sugars, uh, we actually mean carbohydrates, you know, generally. Mm. But the point is that if you are actually taking, you know, uh, polysaturated carbohydrates, so carbohydrates that would need the body some time to break it down into those smaller chunks, that's fine. But you know what they are serving you now? The ones that they have already broken into the ones that are not helpful for your kidneys. So they hit your for system your straight. So it exactly. So then it puts a lot of strain on their pancreas. And again, of course, with time, it needs to now push a lot of insulin to be able to deal to control it. With time, if you are not able to deal with it, then you run into trouble. But I need to say quickly that the, those that are pancreatic challenges are actually of the minute, you know, number in terms of, you know, uh, diabetes, all right? So that's what we call the type 1 diabetes. So through no fault of yours, something hits on your pancreas or you take too much alcohol, it hits on your pancreas. So, you know, that's actually a smaller chunk. But the majority are because uh, we are not able to absorb the insulin, oh, sorry, the sugar that we have taken for the liver to work with. You know, that's what we call the type 2. So the type 2 is not like the pancreas has failed from the beginning, but if variable it fails with time. But then what is important is that we try to differentiate the two. Yeah, Ben. Uh, please hold for me, Doc. Let me also bring in Thomas Kahn. Uh, Thomas, a very good morning to you. Hello, Thomas. Hi. Good morning, Benjamin. Good morning, Thomas. It's good to have you join the conversation. We are very grateful. Uh, my first question to you, I mean, you've been listening to Doc. Uh, what led to your bouts with kidney disease? What, what ails you as far as your kidneys are concerned? What led to the situation? Well, I, uh, what I think is uh, I developed hypertension that I wasn't aware of. Uh, wow. You remember when Dr. Shlema was uh, talking, he talked about uh, us having regular checkups and all of that. And um, I think that that is one of the things that I lacked. And... Um, uh, you know, I went to the hospital, I got sick, and one time they said my BP was high. But um, I didn't get that education that after giving me that medication, I was going to be on it forever. Or, or, or I needed to go back to the hospital to recheck how uh, my BPs were doing. So after taking it, I, I assumed that it was just uh, the usual rhetoric that, uh, oh, this is a course. So after completion, that, that was it. Because I wow. felt fine and I thought that was it. And then later did I know that I had developed hypertension. So uh, with time, it deteriorated and then, you know, it, it got to that stage because um, I'm not somebody who drinks or smokes, but hmm. uh, it happened to me. Wow. And, and this is so sad because, yes, Doc spoke about hypertension, uh, blood pressure issues leading to uh, kidney-related issues. And, and that's exactly what happened to you. So this was basically because the, the hospital facility you went to, simply, or the medical facility, did not inform you that you had to continue with the course, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. So uh, I think uh, that, 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 that is one of the major challenges. Wow. And again, uh, 
I don't remember taking in this um, herbal concoction and those things. So basically, that's where I linked the whole thing to. What has I it been? Extension FE that I wasn't aware of. Mm. And and <laughs> anyway, what has it been like? Because sometimes I get so it's like someone getting injected and then suffering paralysis because someone did not inject properly. Just the right way to do things. But what has it meant for you over these? last 10 years to have kidney disease. What has it been like living through this? Yeah, uh, Benjamin, to, to... I think we have a little challenge with uh, Thomas Kahn's uh, connection. Very delicate issue we're discussing here this morning, and he's been gracious enough uh, to allow us into his private space to share uh, these with us, hoping that, I mean, even as we talk about the surrounding issues, all of us are also learning so that we can take better care of our bodies. You become hypertensive, don't take it for granted. It could actually affect your kidneys and lead you into a very, you know, precarious uh, situation. We'll see whether we can get Thomas Kahn back. Thomas, uh, please go ahead. If you can hear me, Tom Thomas, please go ahead. You'd have to unmute. Thomas, can you hear me? If, if you can hear me, just unmute for me, please. All right, we'll try to get uh, Thomas back. Uh, Doc, so there you go. Another instance of someone, like you rightly said, it helps in, you know, blood. Uh, I, I think, I don't know whether it's production, so when it goes low, it will help in that. And here you are, blood pressure related issue. I mean, how bad is it that a medical facility did not give him the right guidance? And look at where Thomas has ended up. Yeah, so I think um, I would want to say that before maybe we start looking at the, just the medical facility, I think one of the things he mentioned is the fact that um, sometimes you might even have this hypertension without knowing, and I think that is the key thing. Um, our health facilities are there when we are sick, so it is actually uh, made for curative. But this we are discussing now, we are targeting preventive, more of wellness. Mm. So the key thing is that don't even wait for any symptom, you know, keep checking it. And if you find that it is high, then you would have to now seek help in the health facility. And again, that's when now, yes, they needed to have let him know that, listen, hypertension is something that will not disappear overnight and that we may need to monitor you for a period of time. And the key thing I would want to say quickly is that, you know, there was a caption that, you know, uh, diabetes is the leading cause, you know, um, diabetes and hypertension, yes, are the leading causes. But in our part of the world, like people like uh, Thomas will come in at a relatively young age, where we think that they may not have developed the hypertension for long enough to have been the cause of the kidney disease. So on the other hand, like I told you, that the kidney actually is the one that controls the blood pressure. So that blood pressure that was picked for Thomas, I mean, I dare say that it was possible that as of that time, the kidney function was already reducing and mm. it was only showing as hypertension because now the kidney had lost its ability to control the blood pressure. So in our part of the world, we actually think that there are some other things that what includes all these risk factors we talked about in terms of the food we are eating, in terms of risk factors of what we are born with, and we probably get some you know, damages to our kidney little by little as we are growing up that we don't know until you know we are in our 20s or we are in our 30s and it begins to show as kidney disease. And then one of the things we easily can pick is the hypertension. Okay, mm. so I am, I am sure that it, there's a strong possibility that as of the time they picked the hypertension, probably the kidney function as of then had reduced a bit. And that is why I would say, I'm sure uh, health care providers are listening. When you see a person who is less than 40 or you are listening or watching us and you are less than 40 years and you are told you have hypertension, I beg you, please, please, please suggest nicely to your doctor to at least check your kidney function. And I think that is very important. I believe now we are training doctors to be able to do this, but just in case, assuming they miss on it, mm. it is your life, it is your own. So just suggest to them to, oh, check the kidney function, check a few other things to be able to see where the level is. So if it's probably dealing, we are around 60%, 50%, right. then we manage it well to mm. ensure that at least your kidneys can last you a lifetime. Mm. Or else, you know, the consequences are die if we, we miss this important point. And of course, you have to take care of yourself. There are a lot of this, mm. lots of times when I'm going for something, I, 
I read a lot around it before I go so that I have a conversation with the doctor. Uh, because th that person is not perfect, there may be an oversight and you would be at the losing end because it's your body. A quick one before I bring in Thomas Kahn. Um, I I'd like to find out, I realize that sometimes too, some things that put a lot of strain on the kidneys can lead to severe bodily reactions. For example, you start working out, you've not been working out for a while, and then you start boom, you start working out and it's, it's excessive and all of that. I hear that too can have an impact on your kidney and its functions, like a lot of activity all of a sudden, working out. Is that correct? I think Doc's, Doc's connection is also frozen. Oh, no. Okay, Doc, did you get that question? No, I thought it was to Khan, so... No, it, it's to you, actually. Again. Sorry. It, excessive, so let's say abrupt outbursts of working out, for example. Yes. Can that affect yes. the kidneys? Yes, it can. All right. So I uh, thank you for that. You know, so when we are discussing it in the chronic sense, you know, I don't want to scare people with the acute sense because trust me, we are all one way or the other at risk of kidney disease because of the major role it plays in our daily lives. So you are right. I mean, one day, you know, you want to get some muscles, you want to impress, you know, those ladies and you decide that, OK, you are actually going to get those muscles overnight. And you wake up so much so that you know you have all the muscle aches and all now one of the things we measure in blood to know how well the kidney is functioning actually sits more in the muscle so when you go and exercise what you are doing is that you are putting a lot of strain on the muscles when you put this strain on the muscles and a bit of them will tear and all of that they release something into the blood now these things they release into the blood when they are in very high concentrations they are directly toxic to the kidney so I've actually mm. had patients who will tell you that, oh, they started gymming just last week and, you know, um, all of a sudden their urine output has decreased and you check their kidney function and has dropped. But the advantage here is that if you're able to pick it well and keep yourself hydrated, so advice is that whatever uh, exercise you are doing, keep drinking a lot of water. So even when you produce these toxins, their concentrations are low that at least the kidneys can deal with it. And of course, there's that phase of, you know, pain when you start these exercises, which eventually normalizes with your body. So through that phase, if you are hydrating yourself well, you'll be fine. But nonetheless, if you don't hydrate yourself well and you even run into trouble, when you come in and you need even dialysis, we can guarantee you it's for a short period of time and that the kidneys will bounce back again, you know, right. for you to go on with your normal life. So it's, you know, uh, it's really possible to exercise mm. and run into trouble mm. then. It's, it's good that you've said that the kidneys have, like many other organs of the body, have the potential of bouncing back. Let me come to Thomas Kahn now. Uh, we lost you when you were sharing your lived experience when it comes to battling kidney disease. Please go ahead, Thomas. Uh, unmute for me. Yeah. All right. Um, can you hear me, please? I can hear you. Please go ahead. All right. So like I was saying, um, I had hypertension that I wasn't aware of. So... Uh, you know, hypertension is such that if it is not well managed, that is when it can escalate and get to that extent. And that is uh, how come I also got myself uh, uh, being a victim of um, um, a, a kidney disease. Mm -hmm. And again, like I told you, I'm not somebody who does this hair back concussions and stuff like that. I don't drink, I don't smoke, but uh, uh, this is what has happened to me. So like that uh, doc mentioned, okay. that it's important for all of us to uh, take care of ourselves. And again, um, he talked about uh, drinking a lot of water. The irony is that when you have kidney disease, you can't even take in much water. That is the irony of it, because the body cannot, uh, you know, yeah. uh, release all that. That has to come out. So uh, it has never been an easy road for me, uh, because uh, you don't get to eat what you want. You can't take in some of the things that everybody and, else and, and, can I, and I was just about to get there. So. The, the limitations when it comes to the food you eat, the things you drink, you are limited. Tell us about that. Very limited. Uh, mm. Very, very limited. Very, mm. very limited. Uh, I, I, I was somebody who loved Wache, I loved Gobe and all of that. But unfortunately, yeah. I can't eat all of that. Yeah, because, uh, you know, beans is in, high in protein. So all of that, uh, you are being restricted. You can't take it. And again, you can't take in uh, as much water that... Uh, you, 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 you can take. How, how, so how does that make you feel within your body? You, you, are there times when, for example, you are thirsty, you want to drink, but you are thinking of the consequences of drinking, so you, you don't drink? 
Yeah, you, you don't do that. So uh, in my uh, situation and, and most uh, kidney patients, what? Uh, which was maybe good stuff um, that uh, uh, um, um, you get ice, some ice cubes, ice cubes or something, then uh, just sip small and then you, you are fine. So you don't get to drink a lot. So I just take some chilled stuff, um, chilled um, maybe ice cubes uh, or just a little chilled water, and then that's kind of quench the test. Wow. Wow, uh, yeah. wow, wow. If you can, you are out there and you can drink water, you can gulp down the 500 milliliters and the rest, don't take it for granted. Listen to what Thomas Kahn yeah. is saying. But in terms of the financial yeah. impact, the impact on your pocket over these last 10 years, what has that been like? Paint a picture for us. In fact, it has not been an easy road, Benjamin. It's been very, very hard, difficult, because there are times that you have to uh, fall on friends and family to just have some money to go to the hospital. Mm. At a point, you can ask uh, Richard Virginia Co and other media colleagues, they had to organize some sort of like a fundraising to help me. And it's been my friends, my, my classmates from Influence Film, they have been very phenomenal. They've been very supportive. And then I say a big, big shout out to my mobile fraternity, uh, the mobile offer group. They've been very, very supportive. Uh, then uh, my my uh, colleague media uh, uh, colleagues from uh, Media General and all of that they have been very supportive. If not for them, I I, I wouldn't have been alive speaking to we, you. We now. thank God. We and, thank God for all of yeah. them. And and, and uh, Benjamin, uh, one of the things that uh, um, uh, I I must also comment. There was one time in the quest to get some uh, support for victims of kidney disease. There was one time the current health minister. Ajiba Medu came to a, a program in Cape mm. Coast. And then I told him how serious <laughs> this problem is. And I told him I was even only at the hospital. Mm. And then the, the minister, current uh, uh, health minister, gave me a thousand cities just to go and defray some of the costs. And he promised me that uh, he was going to do something so that uh, those of us living with kidney disease will uh, you know, at least get some um, um, support. But till now, it's been years. And we, we, we are yet to see that, uh, uh, you know, promise that he gave us, uh, you know. I'll come to you uh, shortly, Thomas Kahn, so we elaborate on that, because I want us to go a bit heavy on the issue of cost. But let me come back to Doc. So having listened to Thomas Kahn, you already are aware of a situation. I, I was going to go into the details of how much averagely it has cost him over these 10 years to deal with the disease. What then should we know further about kidney disease by way of treatment? At what point do you get to dialysis? And, and how much more should we know so that we just keep ourselves from even getting there? Doc. Okay. So thank you very much. So when we talk generally about uh, kidney disease, Ben, um, so it's actually a whole spectrum. Now, the key thing is that in as much as you've not got into the end stage, we call it, uh, or kidney failure, you can stay off dialysis. Now, getting kidney disease in itself is very common. I mean, here in Ghana, as per our study, we have about 13.3% uh, having kidney disease. So if we assume our population at 30 million, some 4 million people have it. Now, those staggering statistics are various stages of it, and they will not need dialysis. But the worrying aspect is that if you don't get it checked, for us to keep you where you are, and it progresses, that is when you get onto dialysis. So we need to understand that, you know, we are all at risk, and that is why you need to definitely check how well uh, your kidneys are doing. So since you brought that, that up, since, want... since you brought that up, before you get to the next uh, bit, so if you require dialysis, okay, how often, mm -hmm. how often should you get this dialysis? And I'm asking that question in context. I know you can't answer, uh, respond to the best about cost and, you know, the new dynamics we are facing, but... If you're supposed to get dialysis, let's say once a week or twice a week, and you don't get that, what would it mean? I mean, in terms of life and death, well, basically. Well, if you are not, in fact, ideally, you're supposed to get uh, dialysis done three times a week. Three times? Uh, because of, yes, three times. Three mm -hmm. times. You pee um, how many times a day? I mean, so indeed, if we need you to put, uh, be put on the machine, once a week will not be enough. You actually need three times a week, ideally. Again, because of cost, most of our patients do it twice and some even once and some as and when they get some little money. And that is really disheartening. 
So you need three times a week. So let's, I mean, uh, looking at Kolibu's numbers, let's say on the average, if you're saving 500, you are talking about 1,005 um, a week. So that amount, you know, that was given to uh, Thomas by the health minister cannot even take care of one week's uh, dialysis alone. And then, of course, for a month, you are talking about, you know, times four. So let's say 6,000, you know. So if we use Kolibu's new numbers, of course, then you can actually do the math. So it is very expensive and you need it because if you miss a day of it, you feel terrible. And I think uh, uh, Thomas will be able to let you know when probably he has to travel and he misses a session of dialysis the way he feels because you cannot breathe. You, you know, you need that machine to take off every fluid from your body. And that's why you are not at liberty to drink too much. So now the key thing is that if you miss it for a period and your fluid accumulates, it goes into your lungs. And if you cannot breathe, it's like you are drowning. I'm sure if you have experienced drowning before, that is how my average patient feels when they miss their dialysis. And with time, you get confused. With time, of course, if you don't get the dialysis, then I'm afraid you are going to die. All right. So you need that machine to survive on daily basis or on weekly basis. I so so, so just clarify for me. I'm doing this intentionally. So if someone yeah. misses two sessions or let's yeah. say three sessions, can that person mm. die because of the cost factor? Now, it means that if, if it's shot up to over 100%, some people naturally simply cannot afford it. How many people can pay that sum of money every week? So if someone misses about two or three sessions, is it likely they could die? It, it depends on what we call their, their level of kidney function. You know, some are able to pass urine at least, you know. So if you're still able to pass some amount of urine, it cushions you for a couple of days. But I'll tell you a practical example. Somewhere, I think last two weeks, my patient missed a session of dialysis and we had to admit in Confanochi. So if wow. we had not intervened, she would have died straight away. Okay, so it is so important that we realize that depending on your level, when hmm. you miss one session, you are dying. Depending on your level, probably if you miss three sessions, you are gone. Of course, if you go two sessions, it has to, uh, uh, two weeks, it has to be grace or else, you know, we, it will be gone too soon, yeah. I know you have to take leave of us. Do you have any final words for us, for us, for the viewers? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, so uh, thank you for this opportunity. And I think what I would say is that uh, kidney disease, in my opinion, politicians, uh, people who have the wherewithal, let's not make it look like it is somebody else's problem. It is a national problem. And in any case, the young people who are getting it, Thomas can speak to you now, brilliant chap. If he didn't get the support, he would have been dead and gone. We are losing human resource who will be able to work to pay taxes to government. So please, the government should intervene one way or the other. If you cannot even bear the full cost, at least some bit of support to be able to help out. Because indeed, to be able to run the dialysis unit, to be able to make sure this happens, it's, it's cost. And that is why Kolibu is struggling. So if we don't get the needed support, eventually the poor patients are actually going to bear the brunt. And indeed, it's actually straight correlation to mortality in the fact that we are going to lose more of our health, uh, our economic workforce, and they will not be able to pay taxes to government. So let this be a national issue for us to deal with it, you know, uh, the best we can as a, a nation. Thank you very much, Ben. Doc, we're so grateful. I can see that you are, you are emotional yourself because you see these things. It's, it's not easy seeing people knowing that probably it's out of control, out of your hands, and that these people could die and there's nothing you can do. It must be so yeah. difficult. Very difficult. And that's why I always take the opportunity to educate the, anybody at all, at least. So I, I decrease the number of people who come on dialysis. You know? So we need to uh, look at this you know, carefully. Thank you very much. And uh, I will have to run. Thank you very Doc, much. Doc, I wish you the best of the day. We are so mm -hmm. grateful that you took the time to engage us. That is Dr. Elliot. Kranting Tano, senior lecturer here in USD, senior specialist and consulting nephrologist at the Komfuanoche Teaching Hospital. Look, wherever you are, before I go back to Thomas, take care of yourself. Watch your BP. Watch what you consume. What the, all these herbal things out there. I'm not saying they're bad. If they are FDA approved and all of that, take care of yourself. Sometimes it takes one wrong thing you put in your body. It messes you up for life. You don't want to do that. Because, look, here's a little breakdown, okay? So if you need dialysis three times a week, like Doc has just mentioned, if we are using the current rate that Kolibu has put out because of taxation, and I'll go to Thomas for details on that, you are looking at every session costing 765 Ghana cities, or 765.42 Ghana cities, okay? That's around $67. If you do that, three sessions will be 2,296 plus Ghana CDs. 
about $198. Let's round it off to about $200. How many people earn that kind of money? If you put the total together for a month, that would be a staggering 9,185 plus Ghana cities, or almost $800. So just stay away. I mean, do your best. Because if we stick by these figures, many people will simply die. God forbid. Thomas, all of this has got me rather emotional because I was focusing on the cost, the cost factor of all of this. If I asked you, for example, over these last 10 years, contributions from MOBA, from Media General, from your friends, from other institutions, if I asked you to give us a ballpark figure about how much it has cost you to suffer kidney disease, what would you tell me? Um, Benjamin, I would say that it's quite a chunk of money. In fact, uh, I, I can imagine uh, if you owned uh, even multimedia, I'm sure uh, if it was yours, and uh, uh, whatever money you, you would have gotten, I'm sure by now uh, you would have also run to IMF like the government has done. Hmm. In fact, it has never been easy at all. And uh, Benjamin, talking about the cost, just the thinking and the, the thought of cost alone has killed people faster than the disease because people cannot afford it. People can simply not afford. There are times that people have come to the hospital and they, because they can't afford, they tell the hospital authorities that they, they should just remove the lines. You mean, uh, I mean, the lines that they use yeah. for the dialysis. Yeah, There's yeah. something we call uh, the, uh, uh, the fistula that the, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, how do you call it? The lines that we use it for the, the, that is just to go and die hope because they can't afford. They come and they are like, no, we can't afford. Even at uh, the current rate, for instance, uh, when you go to the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, uh, that is uh, charging 350. Even that, people cannot afford. So for for and then for now, Benjamin, we are just uh, uh, depending on the, the cost of dialysis. You know, the dialysis procedure comes with uh, other uh, procedures. Uh, that is talking about the medication that accompanies it. We've not even spoken about it yet. And these medications are not even covered by the health insurance and the periodic lab tests that you have to do. So even uh, adding those costs to the dialysis cost itself, that should tell you the uh, quantum of money that goes into it. And like I said, the thought of just the cost alone is killing people faster than the disease. And it's something that the government should, need, uh, should do something about it. It is a national crisis that uh, something should be done about it. Recently, we heard government talk about uh, putting up some hospitals called Agenda 111. Benjamin, to tell you the truth, until recently, the whole of Western and Central region were depending on the Cape Coast City Hospital for dialysis. So people from uh, Takwa and Lubu and all those places were traveling that far distance to come to the Cape Coast City Hospital for dialysis. It was just recently that the Fiat Quanta had a dialysis unit there. And then ask, how many machines do we have in the various units? For instance, the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, where I do mine, uh, the hospital is 25 years. And the uh, machines we have there are aging. Some of them are more than 10 years, and they are broken down. And the hospital facility cannot provide. It, it means that uh, government needs to do, uh, do their provision. And here is a case, uh, there is an excuse that because they are not getting uh, tax exemptions and all of those things, uh, uh, the prices ha have to go up. So that tells you that it is a national crisis that government needs to do something about it. People are dying, Benjamin, people are dying. And, and you know, and, uh, in recent times, there, there's been talk about taxes and paying more taxes and all of that. I, since we'd like to talk about taxes, I want to look at the UK, for example, and what they do, the NHIA, and how they treat such you know, cases, kidney disease. I've, I've read lots about the provisions they make, medical facilities, you know, so that people can easily access some of these services. Here, uh, I don't know how our taxes are working for us in this arena. And like Doc said, if we are to pay attention to the figures, that's about 4 million out of our population who are impacted with various degrees of kidney-related uh, disease. So from where you sit, do you think this should be a part of the NHIS uh, so that Benjamin. it can be waived? Is, is that something you're looking forward to? 
this is something that I have been advocating for. You know, um, as, as my little way of also uh, helping the situation, I have been doing this kind of advocacy for years, and we've been calling on government to, to have uh, the NHIS uh, at least uh, absorb some of the costs, even if it is half of it. I think it will, it will, it will help because uh, I have a friend who is in the U.S., and who is also battling with kidney disease. Over there, the NHIS or the, the health insurance system there absorbs it. And they, they even give you the option. Do you want them to do it in the house for you or the hospital? So you have, even have that luxury and that option to do it. But here, you go to the hospital and then the machines are just limited. For instance, you know, the, the, the dialysis process takes four hours. So you go to the hospital where the machines are not many. And then you, you even have one person who comes before you Look at the number of hours you have to wait to get to your turn. There are most times I go to the hospital, I get to the hospital before 3.30 a.m. just to have my turn. Because if you don't go early, it means that you're not going to leave the hospital early. So that alone even is a torture. And again, uh, I should also say that just the cost and everything about uh, kidney disease is a psychological problem and then it's a mental problem that uh, the government should even have a, a real look at because this the cost again mm. can give you a psychological the, the, the cost alone problem. can lead to death but just hold for me uh, especially as you are talking about government we have joining the conversation Kwabna Mintakando he's member of parliament for Juaboso he also is on the health committee of parliament um, Mr. Akando a very good morning to you sir good morning my brother it's, it's not that good a morning because of the subject we are, we are contemplating. And people, basically, you have about 4 million people in this zone affected by kidney-related disease. And now, Kolebu is telling us, the situation is out of our hands. Our exemptions, when it comes to certain equipment, has been taken off. So we have to pay tax. And if we have to pay tax, then we must pass it on at a certain point. Why you can ex Parliament grants exemptions on so many things? Why are we not granting exemptions on something as crucial as this? Uh, who am I speaking to, please? This is Benjamin Akako on the AM show. Oh, my own brother, Benjamin. Mm. Good morning. Good I morning. agree with you that uh, like morning is not that very good. And uh, when this issue came about, I was really shocked myself. And so, if you recall, um, Two days ago, <clears throat> I spoke about it. Yesterday, I spoke extensively about it. And today, Kunibu has also reacted that he retreated on the price they were, they were intending to, to, to charge. But the whole issue is that, my brother, the, every health facility, public health facility, the main objective is not profit making. It is quality health care delivery, mm. unlike other private health care facilities. That's number one. Number two, we are talking about health. And therefore, it is in the right direction for government to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Because it is the responsibility or the mandate of the government to ensure that the people in the country receive quality health care. So whatever it takes for us to strengthen our dialysis department or unit to take care of the renal patient, we must do it. And so, for example, buying of equipment, at least every difficult facility in this country must have dialysis machines. And these dialysis machines must be purchased by government. Because if you allow the facilities themselves to go and purchase their own machines, for example, sometimes they enter into agreement with the service provider, sellers and co, those companies, and they will have to raise the money to go and pay. And that is where you have atrocious charges. But if government is the one who has purchased all these machines for the health facilities, then the charges will be minimal. And of course, I agree that there is no sense in withdrawing. It's not as if um, there was even a tax on it, and we are saying that it should even I mean, remove the tax. So it was purely an exemption on those materials. And government decided that they need more money, and therefore we should put back taxes on these regions. And these materials. When when did this happen? When when were these exemptions oh, taken well, off? Quite recently. Quite recently. It's not too long ago. Quite recently. I think it's less than a year. Less than a few months ago. What was the basis for this de decision? Okay. So that's what I'm saying. Government says you need more money. 
That's all. So what the government says is, it needs more money, and more so it's money. taken off the exemptions. Exemptions. So what I think we should do, and you see, where we as parliamentarians are handicapped is that when the things are presented, the details are not presented like, okay, these are, I mean, Charles' region in the, I mean, suppose that, or in the memo, okay? And so, we, for example, if there are, I mean, uh, taxes on um, some materials or goods, the minister responsible in the sector can write that these equipment or these materials must be exempted. And it is done. If I do write a decision to parliament for us to also sit on it and make sure that those things are exempted. But, but, uh, but the, the, the Mr. Kando, it, baffle, it baffles me. Before you come in, mm. the, 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 the most important point is that Kolebu cannot say that because we are going through difficulty, we will sit at Kolebu and fix our own price. It's not done. It's illegal. So even if there are problems... You're, you're saying what Kolebu is doing is illegal? It's illegal. Are you, he's the first... But how do you expect them to sustain the service if, if they don't do something like this? Then everything brother, will shut down. My brother, this, this, this country is regulated by law. It is not for nothing that we have seized and charges act. So before you do that, you must come to parliament and convince us that this is the reason why you must pay so and so and so tax. And so whatever they are doing at the moment, it's illegal. But, but how can you hold them how can you hold them culpable when government in order to do what it did came to you in parliament and you approved it what i'm saying to you is that if you say reagent or equipment we in parliament will not know that and i've already indicated to you that there are some other equipment or or, or, or materials that the minister has that power to write to us to exempt given the critical nature of those effects. And no such things have come to parliament. But before then, we had these exemptions already in place until it was removed. So it can, it can be done. It's not as if they came to us and we have approved that we have put taxes on, I mean, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, um, um, regions for dialysis. And there's another second leg of it. They are also saying that the cover Procurement cover that government provides for them, government is saying that they are stopped, they are no more providing procurement cover for them at least. Whereas in our past, whatever we can do as members of parliament, when they come to us and tell us the consequences of whatever law in place, we are ready and willing to go the full length with them. You understand? But you don't sit down and say, because I am going through these challenges. This is what I have decided to do. It's not done. Okay, so we know that other health facilities are maintaining, CAF and others are maintaining uh, their prices, but this is what Kolebua said. We'll see how so that I, issue, I, we'll see I, how I that issue is, is dealt with. So, Ho hold so on I'm for me. This morning, I'm told this morning mm. that Kolebu has, I mean, to release a press statement that they've retreated. They are no more charging the certain that to buy the, the, the intent charging. So you can verify. So okay. We have we have we have had that. Should, should we that. should we put dialysis you know on the NHIS the scheme that, and and that, then again if not what are you going to do about this tax situation so that there can be some normalcy because like it or not if the taxes keep adding up at some point something will have to be done and the medical facilities I, may be pushed I like to the wall. Question. These questions are the way forward. I like this question. Okay. Now. The first thing is that Kolebu should go to the minister and they, they should even write a petition to us. Or all the health facilities, they can write a petition to us at, at, the, at parliament. In fact, most of these tax exemptions are dealt with by the finance committee. But as the health committee, we are their advocates. So they can come to us and then we will speak for them on these uh, uh, um, tax exemptions matter. So the window is not closed at all. We can sit down and see the way forward. But the second issue that has to do with the National Health Insurance absorbing the dialysis, that would have been fantastic. But you see, Ben, let us not pretend. Our National Health Insurance Act is this now. We are all pretending. 
is a national health insurance scheme where subscribers go and they are still giving bills to go and pay. They call it co-payment. So you go to the hospital and then you have to go and buy for example. Because health service providers are saying that government is not paying realistic tariffs. And so, for example, they will go and buy a pass about five Ghana cities in the market. Government says, according to the tariff we are paying, we are paying only three cities. So when the subscribers or the patients go, they will say, we don't have pass So you have to go and see. So the, the one we have now is already weak. If you add challenges, you just add just for the sake of addition. Because the people will go and pay it anyway. So what we must do is that we must strengthen the national health insurance we have at the moment. How do we do that? The national health insurance levy we all pay. For example, government projected to collect 5.7 billion Ghana cities for national health insurance as national health insurance levy. Now, government is giving only seven point, uh, uh, only 2.7 billion Ghana cities to national health insurance I mean, authority per year 2023 formula. Where is the rest going? They are taking the rest back to conservative funds to use it for whatever they want. So, what they are giving to the national health insurance cannot put their full expenditure for the year. So, they will end up giving unrealistic tariffs to the service providers and we won't get the quality health care we need. And so, we must sit down and say that look, the, all the 5.7 billion Ghana cities must go back to the what you call it, the National Health Insurance um, Authority, let's use it for its intended purpose. Even if there is a gap, then we can sit and then talk about the gap. But you don't take a chunk of the money, and then you come back and say there is a gap. So there's a whole conversation about the National Health Insurance absorbing more diseases. That is a problem. Even if we are not taking the dialysis completely, there could be an arrangement. Okay, now it's 380. And so, if you have a national health insurance card, if you come, come and pay Henry Ghana to it's a way forward. Mm -hmm. So we can think through all these, I mean, um, avenues and come to some kind of win-win situation. But the national health insurance as it stands now, there's a huge problem. It's a huge problem. Well, uh, j just finally, in some 20 seconds, wh what action will you take on this? I want to know, moving forward, what will you do yes, so as a member of the forward, Health Committee? Exactly. We have started this conversation. The first thing we need to do is that government must decap the national health insurance. First thing to do. Government must decap, and I'm talking about this separately, <clears throat> on the floor of the House, in the media, everywhere. It doesn't even make sense to cap any health facility in this country. Do you know? That at the moment, government is even saying that the internally generated funds from the health facilities, they must bring some to the central government. Do you know that even the light bill that is being subsidized for the health facilities, the government says, no way, they are no more going to pay it. Like so these are issues. So we, we are all going to start the conversation on some of this. But the first thing to do is to decap the health sector. That's the first thing to do. Thank you, uh, Kwabna Minta Akando, is Member of Parliament for Dwabosu. He is also on the Health Committee of Parliament. Thomas, uh, before I come to you, let, we're activating the phone lines, yeah? So if you have any concerns, any thoughts to share, you heard the Member of Parliament for Dwabosu saying basically it was like a veiled uh, thing done. So when government says, we want more taxes, we need more taxes, it's, it comes on block. So they can't detach or decouple and realize that in there, as you approve, it's also going to affect medical equipment, including what is used for dialysis. But that is how far we've come. Government is taxing practically everything. And now, those who need dialysis, that treatment, to ensure they stay alive, if something is not done soon, we could imperil their lives. Are you affected? Do you have any kidney-related disease? Is it diabetes leading to something of the sort? Or do you have a relative in that you know, situation? Even if you don't, what are your sentiments on this matter as a Ghanaian? It could be you. It could be me. Any day. 
211-691-211-691 is the number to call. Call and let us know what your thinking is. Send a message to government. 0302-211-691. Let me come to Thomas. Uh, listening to Kwamna Menta Kando, uh, does it surprise you that government has pushed on taxation to this point where it is affecting literally your life? Well, uh, Benjamin, it's, it's really disheartening and scary. Really scary. Very, very scary. Because all this while, we have been uh, praying that governments will have a subsidy for us. Because always, uh, you ask the uh, health professionals, and the excuse is that uh, because of the taxes. And then again, you know, uh, the inputs used for dialysis are imported. So if they have to go and pay huge sums of money at the ports just to get these uh, uh, inputs into uh, the country, and then they are being taxed or they are being charged at that high rate, then it means it's, it's a problem. It's a problem that government needs to do something immediately about it. Because Benjamin, like I told you, we are losing a lot of lives. People I began dialysis with 10 years ago, not even a single person is alive. A lot of wow. them, it is, not, it is not because of the, 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 the disease. They died because they couldn't afford. About how many people are we talking of? These are people you started dialysis with. Now, none of them plenty, is alive. Plenty, plenty, not even one. Not even one. G give, give me a ballpark figure. I mean, how many? Five, ten? I, I, I can say more than a hundred people. More, more than a hundred people? Yeah. As far as my memory uh, wow. serves me, right? And for you, and you are alive because of the problem. support, the financial support you uh, have got. That, that is what has sustained And then again, you. again, apart from the financial support, I told you about the cost. People are dying just because of the thought of the cost. Just the thinking of the cost. That alone can give you a mental problem. People are just thinking of uh, the money they have to go and pay at the hospital. Because this is a disease that you have to be going to the hospital every, at least every two, three days. You have to go to the hospital. So if we are not getting the money to go, what, 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 what would that result to? You'll be thinking about where to get the money and all of that. So it, 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 it's a serious problem that we need to tackle as a nation. Let, let me come to the bit about what Kolebu uh, per Kwabunamenta Akando has released, that they are going back to the former price. But I, I know that if the taxes remain, it's only a matter of time. Uh, for those of you watching, I'd like to hear from you. 0302 211 0302-211-691. But for you, Thomas, what, what kind of relief? I, I know you don't go to Kolebu for your dialysis, I mean, per what you've told me. But for those who go, I mean, what sort of mental and emotional turmoil would they have been going through just hearing that is going to increase by over 100% per what you've been telling me? Hello, Thomas. We've, we've unfortunately lost the connection to... Thomas will try to get him back uh, on the, the line or via Zoom, I should say, so we can have this conversation. But, you know, all of this has really got me thinking. Someone came into the country recently and asked me about our health system, and I have to tell the person what the, the realities are. Recently, we went somewhere, a medical facility, and even getting a bed. I mean, it's something we talk about so often, but you have someone in a dire situation and they can't even get a bed. What kind of country is this? We have a call on the line. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello. Good morning. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Alex. I'm calling from Bibiani. Alex from Bibiani, what are your yes. thoughts on this matter? <laughs> I don't know. It's very, very disheartening. I don't know what is happening to this country. Our leaders are being too callous. We are not thinking about the ordinary Ghanaians, the people who put them there, the people who, who ensure that we are at where we are. And they are just putting more hardship on us each and every day. How can the ordinary Ghanaians afford the amount they, that they are talking about. If the person is able to, uh, 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 I mean, get an amount of uh, 500 dollars within the, the month, how can such a person 
get the, the uh, pay for this amount that they are talking at the hospital. It means the person will have to go and die, which is very, very unfair. Our leaders have to think about us, because that is why we put there. They have to think about us. I, I can't you think about these things and you don't understand why Akufo Abi is doing all these things. It is not fair. It is not very, very fair at all. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, from BBNA for calling. I, I just want to say this. Mr. Finance Minister, Ken Oforiata, Mr. Finance Minister, is it possible, I mean, respectfully, with all the taxes, fine, is it possible to look at this specific issue and grant some sort of waiver on this equipment? It is so sad. Is it possible, Mr. Finance Minister, is it possible, Mr. President, for you to step in and say, you know what, the times are hard, but we can't squeeze water out of stone. And as far as this group or men, many other medical exigencies, let's take them off so that people don't die. Why does it have to get to this? Hello, good morning. Good morning, please. Please, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Um, my name is Tyro. I'm calling from Upper East. Your name is what? Tyro, please. Right. Please go ahead. Please, I want to ask a government to look at it very seriously. This one, there a lot of people will die. There is no money in the system. Already, there is no money to even eat. And we are increasing from 300 to up to 700. Where is the money? Let's assume that you are a government worker and you are taking 2,000 months. Sir. And this one, you have to take that every week. Your, your, your salary, sir, you, you can't even buy the system, the drug. So they should take it seriously. I'm urging the government to do something about it. Thank you. Thank you so much for the call. So if you need this every three days, max, and you're spending even, let's approximate it, 300 cities. It's more, but let's say it's 300 cities. You will need about 4,000 thereabouts a month to take care of your dialysis. How much do you earn? How much does the, the, the average Ghanaian earn? And even that three, those 300 cities are inhibitive. They are prohibitive. How many people can afford it? And if there's any jump in it, it's just going to be worse. Mr. President, Mr. Finance Minister, <laughs> uh, this one, you say you know how to restore the economy. That you've not even been able to do. You say you can't, cannot bring back lives, but at least you can waive taxes, take off taxes to save lives. About 4 million people could be affected directly or indirectly by this. 0302 is the number to call. 0302 We'll try to get back Thomas Kahn and find out what his you know, thoughts are, final thoughts are on these dynamics as we move on and take your calls as well right before we wrap this conversation and move on to talk about the Tema motorway, which in itself has become a death uh, trap. If you'd like to share your sentiments, your thoughts, if you'd like to call on government to do something about the situation, and like I said, it is other people today. We may think it is other people's problems. Tomorrow, it could be your problem, my problem. God forbid, but that is the reality. 0302 Do we have Thomas back? Thomas Khan, can you hear me? All right, we still do not have Thomas. I'll give just a little bit of more time for reactions from you. But per what Kwabena uh, Menta Kando, the member of parliament for Draboso, also on the health committee is telling us this morning, I have not personally seen the document, and so I am merely uh, regurgitating what he has said that the Kolibu Teaching Hospital has rescinded its decision to hike the prices. We have a caller. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Uh, please speak up for me. Your name, where you're calling from? My name is Kweku. I'm calling from Obwase. Kweku in Obwase? Yes. What are you thinking of? 
Yeah, what I'm thinking of, everything in this country is turning into politics. Every morning, the starting NDP, MPP, Alain Chemartin, Kofu, Sikwadu, uh, Mahama, everything are turned into politics. And that's why it's leading to this uh, problem. We are not talking about national issues, and everything is about NDP and NPP. I think they should stop discussing those things and then look forward to on our health issues. Thank you very much. Uh, before you go, how do you think we can resolve this particular issue, for example, outside of the politics? We have a government, we have an opposition. What is your proposal? My proposal is we should develop a national interest. We are each on health issues. Uh, national interest, like if NPC or NDC comes and then you are talking of this national interest, like uh, 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 Mahama started building hospitals before him and then he abandoned it, he started Agenda 111. You should have a national issue that if this is the way we are going, every government camp we should follow. That is, that's how I think it's supposed to be. Not that I have my policy when I can do my own thing, this government also can be doing its own thing. That will not help the country. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for calling into the program and sharing uh, your thoughts. Well, I believe this is how far we have come. We are going, heaven knows where we are going, but we know we will. This is the precarious situation some of our brothers and sisters find themselves in. Like I keep saying, I, I, am, I am troubled this morning because imagine your life hanging by a thread, knowing that, or thinking that if anything should happen and you don't get the dialysis or the treatment you require, you could be dead within a few days. All because of a lack of the financial muscle and all because of a lack of leadership, so to speak. Think about that. Well, we cap off this end of the conversation. When we return, I have used that stretch at least some six to seven times in the last month or so. I'm talking about the Tema motorway. And it's gradually becoming more and more of a death trap. Concrete patched with asphalt and so many things. Many of the stretches uneven. Now there are wild cracks on some section, both to and fro. It is just a terrifically uh, dangerous sight. But people have to ply it every day because that's where they come from. People have experienced tire bursts and all of that on that stretch. But what is the way forward? When we return, we go straight to the Tema motorway and find out what exactly is happening there. But before we do, which school will emerge the overall winner of the maiden edition of Joy Prime's Big Chef Tertiary and run over the cash prize of 20,000 Ghana CDs, 10,000 liters of Syntex tanks, and other amazing products from our sponsors. Well, Big Chef Tertiary Grand Finale is coming to the Volta region, specifically the Ho Technical uh, University campus, on Sunday, the 1st of October, 2023, at 4 p.m. This grand finale uh, will be determined by voting. So you have a 40% say in the voting for your favorite institution via the short code star 713 star 208 hash and following the prompt. Uh, Takwadi Technical University, Kumasi Technical University, Ho Technical University, and residents of Ho are invited to join Joy Prime, the Big Chef finalists, and Premier Unique Kip Fit Club for an aerobics session at the Volta Serene Hotel uh, tennis court on Saturday, September 30, 2023 at 6 a.m. Big Chef is sponsored by Frytor Cooking Oil, Fortune Rice, Indomie, Syntex Tank, Access Bank, U Fresh Drinks, and Trinity Oil. It's supported by the Volta Serene Hotel, Atlas Rent and Car, and Sky Plus Hotel and Resort. Big Chef Tertiary, the kitchen has no boundaries. Joy Prime, your ultimate experience. Well, We'll be coming your way with more right after the break.